So my name is George Lee, and I teach here in San Francisco, California. I've been teaching at the same high school for about the last 20, this is my 27th year. And little did I know that on my 27th year, I will be teaching completely virtually without seeing my students. I mean, I that experience has been both extraordinary in both positive and really detrimental ways. I don't want to minimize the detriment that it has on teaching and learning. But as teachers, you guys all know that we are kind of a beacon of stability and of hope. And even if our students are feeling um, a lot of difficulties, I think one of our major job as teacher is to encourage learning and to encourage the curiosity of learning something new, despite of all the challenges that are facing us. So I've been teaching um, basically online, probably like most teachers around the globe, virtually. And, um, and we had to literally relearn how to teach. So I think that a lot of you who are in this workshop probably have went through a similar type of experience because most of us who teach in the classroom were so used to kind of the, the ambient noise. One of the things that I really, really miss is actually the noise. You know, before I used to tell my students, hey, Johnny, be quiet. Oh, you, stop talking to another, you know, stop talking to, to Kim or, you know, all those things, you know, and all those noises that used to be around me and being able to, you know, a lot of the times we uh, teachers, we always have eyes behind our heads, you know, we kind of know what's going on in this three-dimensionality, in this space, in this real three-dimensional space. And when you're teaching, you know, in a virtual space, all of that is gone. And I don't know if your students in other countries, like say in the Philippines or in Buenos Aires or in Mexico or, you know, wherever you're teaching, when we are doing the virtual teaching thing, most high schoolers will not turn on their cameras and it's dead silence. And all the things that I used to depend on, this chatter, this kind of, you know, student to student communication, student to teacher communication, all the things that I relied on to initiate my, you know, the Eureka moment, the teachable moment, you know, and all those amazing interaction, the spark of teaching and learning, it's gone dead silent. So then how do I then teach my students with that same vigor in this virtual plane? And most importantly, and that's what the workshop is about, is how do we collaborate? How do we take a content and feel that this content belongs to all of us? And by us understanding this content, this subject, we all benefit from this collective knowledge. For example, when you're reading a book in your English class, right? One of the things that we used to do in the classroom is you ask one student to read one paragraph and then the second person comes and read. And then there's this kind of almost a symphony, right? Of different voices that then comes together and create this mutual understanding that becomes what I believe to be and this term I'm gonna be using, a constructivist, a constructivist theory or notion of learning, which means that knowledge in itself in isolation has very little use. It's knowledge that's shared, but most importantly, when knowledge is developed together, that it has its relevance and it has its power for transformation. So now that we're teaching in, virtual, in a virtual classroom, I couldn't lose all those ideals. Then hence the technology that we use. And hence I found Canva. I've been using Canva for about the last two years. And one of the things that I was communicating to Canva at that time was that there needs to be something that allows us to be able to work together at the same time. And the best technology that we were kind of used to using is Google Docs, where you can basically, everybody can get onto the document and write together, right? So that type of technology needed to exist in something 
that I wanted to use, which incorporated text and visuals and all the other multi-sensory aspect of that is needed in learning. So that's my first slide, <laughs> Canva workshop. So we're gonna be talking some of that stuff. And again, I'm gonna go and present. My screen is gonna go back and forth a little bit, but I think that you guys are kind of used to that kind of shift. When I go to a different link, it will be, so now it's on full screen, okay? So, and again, a little bit more personally, uh, a kind of a personal history of my, just to give you guys, um, I, I mean, I gave you the, the context in which I teach, and now I'm going to give you a little bit more about myself. You know, I, um, I was born in Taiwan, and at a very young age, I moved to South America, I moved to Paraguay, vecino de Argentina, and um, so I speak fluent Spanish, but because I'm of a Chinese descent, I also speak Chinese. So a lot of the times when I'm teaching in my classroom, um, I actually kind of play around a little bit with my students. You know, I, I kind of like start my conversation, my, my lecture in English, and then I switch in mid-sentence to Spanish, and then I switch mid-sentence into Chinese. And the reason why I do that is because the classroom in which I teach is very, very diverse. I have students who are brand new to the US, to San Francisco, and their English level is extremely, extremely at the beginner's level. And I have students who have family who are from the Gold Rush era, who's been in San Francisco for a very long time. So English and language is never a problem. And I have also students who are in very, very um, wide range of socioeconomic uh, demographics. And that is still has a lot of implications to our students' experience, both how they relate to learning and how they don't relate to learning. I have students who will have enough um, kind of grades to go to Harvard and Stanford and Berkeley. And I have students in the same classroom sitting next to that students who will probably, and I tried my hardest, not to end up in juvenile, um, in the juvenile system and gangs. So that's literally the, 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 the entire range of the student population which I teach in. And that itself presents a very unique issue and in what in the US we call bridging the achievement gap. We're always trying to bridge the achievement gap so that we can have a kind of a social justice and social implication to education. So my job is to find tools to bridge the achievement gap. And that's the context in which I teach here, okay? So that's a little bit about myself. I'm also an avid cyclist and I practice yoga. It's just something a little bit about why. Okay. So when I first um, kind of got, you know, introduced to Canva, it was actually an English teacher of mine who we worked together. So when I teach my school, even though I'm the media arts teacher, I'm the coordinator or the director of my academies and schools within the school. Um, I work with social studies, English, biology, physics, and math. So my job is to basically take all those curriculum, to those subject matter and integrate it into a project-based learning assignment. So we do a lot of collaboration, not just between students and students, but also students and teachers and teachers and teachers. So it's a very integrated type of learning um, methodology. So when I was introduced to Canva, um, I was actually using this other you know, software, but when I was introduced to Canva, it was by my, um, by my 11th grade English teacher, Monica. And she was doing this amazing assignment that had to do with oral history, where they were actually recording voices and, and finding old photographs from their, you know, from our students' families and putting it into this beautiful presentation. And she shared it with me and I was hooked on Canva and I wanted to kind of learn more and more and more about this unique technology that Canva. And I will tell you a little bit more about one aspect of Canva that really, really, and we're gonna actually do that in our activities today, that really addresses this issue. And again, coming back to constructivist education and also 
this idea of bridging the achievement gap where everybody in the classroom has equal opportunity to gain as much learning from my teaching. That is very, very important. So when their model is empower the world to design, that directly addresses this issue that I had, you know, in trying to kind of, you know, help my students in their learning and in their educational journey with me. So here again, this beautiful classroom in Australia and power creativity and collaboration in the classroom. So I read, when I read this, it's like, hey, I wrote this. I made a poster <laughs> that was not actually as pretty, even though I'm a visual person, visual artist, for, you know, I'm a visual artist, but this is, you know, amazing. So it's, I mean, this is the same motto that I would say of my own desire to happen in my own classroom, which is to empower creativity so that their creativity goes beyond of just the content, beyond just regurgitating what I taught them, is where do you take, what is the next step? When they leave my classroom, where would you use it? That requires creativity. And also collaboration, a collaboration has to do with their ability to make social change. In other words, how to make a world, their world, a better place to live, you know? And for us as teachers, we all know this, that a lot of the times, the reason why we teach is because we see our students as our hopes and dreams for a better future. You know, we, we, we went into teaching because we want to make the world a better place. But we also know that the people that are actually making those changes are actually not us. We're just preparing our students for the change to be better. So today's agenda. So what is Canva for Education? I'm going to introduce that to you a little bit. And I'm also gonna tell you a little bit about my collaboration with Canva. Um, creating in Canva for Education. So this is more specific to how you create lessons. We're gonna call it, I'm gonna share the collaboration on Canva and questions and comments. So when we're doing the collabor collaborating on Canva, we're gonna be asking you to join us in this activity. And I think that Jessica is gonna manage that for us. So that people that want to work on this, we can. And I'll give you more details as we go. We have two um, assignments, activities, assignments, um, that you are going to be my students. <laughs> You're gonna act like students. And then we're gonna basically go and basically have, I think that was an hour and a half, we're gonna have enough time to really guess, get the feel and the zest of, of what this activities really entails. So that hopefully when you get onto your own Canva template and you design those lessons, you can then replicate some of this kind of methodology and the pedagogy. Okay, so what is Canva for Education? First of all, most of you probably know it's free, right? A lot of the times teachers ask, you know, other people ask, well, why is it free, you know? But it is free, so that's great. So there are three major components to what Canva for Education is and kind of relates to the previous slides, you know. So there are million, there are millions and millions. I mean, there are millions of premium images. I mean, literally, there are so many images. And I will talk about the importance of this premium images issue. There are some things that are now happening. So every day, Canva is developing new technology so that it addresses more the tools. It's almost like you know going from using a regular pencil, you know, to a mechanical pencil, to a stylus, to a tablet. So there's always innovation that is happening on cameras that even myself, I'm trying to kind of keep up with, you know. You can create presentations and lessons and add voiceovers, share directly with video link. This is a new thing that I'm actually experimenting now. I'm having a lot of fun in this last few weeks of school with my students. You can collaborate. You can dedicate classroom space to invite students and teachers to share, review, and manage your work. This is almost like a classroom management -ish, uh, system here. And you can share your work to Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, and more. I personally, in my district, we only use Google Classrooms. So if you're familiar with Microsoft Teams, you know, you're more than happy to share with us in the future with me. But I use Google Classroom and it's very, very seamless. So I'll share that with you guys a little bit more. Assign, you can share and review work as an assignment to, uh, for students to complete or individual or collaboratively. There's way in which you can assign the individual assignments. 
I usually do in a format that is just more collaboratively, but I also done individual posters and individual things where students actually work individually. But to be honest with you, most students like to work in collaboration because they get to see what they do. And I'll share that with you later in my examples of my students' work. And assign group work and template project-based learning that can be completed in real time, both in person and remotely. A lot of the times our students, especially in, in remote areas, even in San Francisco, their Wi-Fi sometimes do not work, you know, so sometimes they, they cut out. So there's the project is always there. They can do it on their own time. So this is amazing. I don't usually like to assign homework because I do kind of believe that classwork should be enough, but most, most students actually use their own time to expand and extend because the assignment itself inspires them to want to do more. And that's usually what my homework assignments are. So signing up for Google, uh, signing, signing up for um, a Canva account. Most of you who are here, hopefully already will have one. So I'm going to go over this fairly quickly. Here's the site. And they're now working even more like in Canva, like they're allowing district to sign on. So it's much, much easier. You know, so if you sign up individually, um, usually, you know, you just need to have a school email. My students have also signed up, so they created their own, basically their own Canvas space, which I encourage your students to do, you know, because when you assign a particular lesson, they don't necessarily have a Google account until they sign up for themselves. So I really encourage you, your teachers, your administrators, even parents to be able to sign up so they can be part of the collaborative learning experience. So setting up your class space. So this is my classroom, okay? This is George Lee's class. So when you sign up for the uh, for the Canva classroom, um, for the Canva for Education, you get to have this unique denomination, which is a classroom. And if you see on the left here, right? So I kind of divided it up into projects. And also this is, you can see, this is my second period class and it kind of expands to the bottom. I'll share with that with you a little bit later, but this is unique. And I use this with my, school district email. So here you have, and the nice thing about the camera classroom, this is that it's a much more visually inviting, it's, much, it's a design space. If you know uh, when you use Google Classroom, it's very linear, right? So it's very sequential to every assignment. It's very easy to find those assignments, but it doesn't give you an example. So when you look at the camera classroom, you literally can see assignments and these are open for my students to actually see what the other classes are doing. And again, it's really encouraging kind of, you know, you know, my students to really see the totality of the lesson. So again, is to kind of get my students to see more what other people are doing and hopefully understanding how other students are actually learning. So you see there's a second period created a three act structure storyboard. Right now in San Francisco, in, in the US, we have the Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, and this is really important because of the current news events. So we made this anti-hate and violence posters with our students. You know, we collaborate with SF MoMA. Here is a, a, another assignment that was started and inspired by a, our show that was Frida Carlo, and we did a self-portrait, you know, assignment. So, my, my students are able to kind of come to any one of this and open up and see it. And then they can even, so if they have a very specific, like say the 12th grade business plan, they can go to this specific tab and see all the assignments that are being created by their classmates. So there are other functions here, like recent designs, you know, it kind of gives you all that, the classwork. You can assign different classwork. I'll go into a little bit more into detail the next few slides. So here is how you import, you know, you can import it to Google Classroom, it goes directly. I usually, I mean, sometimes I use this, sometimes I use, don't use this, uh, because what I do most of the time is I actually go into templates, I create the assignment, and then from the actual Google, I mean, from the actual Canva template, there's also a functionality where you can share with Google Classroom, I use that function. 
But what is nice about this particular function here is you can share with other teachers. So I can toggle this to teacher. And now I, I like all of my lesson I share with my English and social studies teacher. For my for the business plan assignment that you guys saw here, here's the 12th grade business assignment. I'm going to share that more with you later. I share that with the econ teacher and also with the English teacher. So when the English teacher sees a student who is a newcomer, who is a uh, English language learner, they're able to really help them with their with their writing. And the and the econ teacher then can further expand on market theories and market um, kind of research and all that that relates to econ. And this is what your students are actually seeing, so they can then join the class. Okay. So one of the things that we have here is a amazing um, is an amazing uh, camera teachers community. is a Facebook group. I'm on that group, um, and every Friday I actually do a webinar that you can sign up for. Um, it's only a half an hour, but we're realizing that we probably need about 45 minutes. So, and we do a lot of the, um, the assignments and activities. I started incorporating activities that kind of now we're in our third week of one assignment. So it's almost like a classroom for teachers and teachers from around the world. So if you wanna collaborate with other teachers on an ongoing basis, this is a very, very good place for you to kind of join and you can sign up. And we have teachers that have returned, you know, the last five different sessions that we've started doing. And they see like the progress of the assignment that they worked on is always very exciting. Okay, how do you find learning material? So if you are a seven or eight, you probably, I'm gonna, you know, you're probably gonna be repeated information. But if you're a one, I'm gonna go through this just so that you see some of the offerings that Canva has to help you basically become much more efficient. It's basically a time saver. Okay, I think that a lot of us come on, came on to Canva for education because we saw all these things. It's like with small modification, we can use it very quickly. So I'm gonna share some of that. So number one, worksheets. I work with the template team and we're always developing now the worksheets. And in the US, we have this thing called the content standards, okay? And in the US it's called Common Core Content Standard, which basically, you know, is a matrix of all the different grade levels according to subject matter and the content in which they have to teach from. So all teachers, we when we go to ed school, you learn the content standards, and then we learn the pedagogy about how to teach that content. And just to let you guys know that in Canva, we are constantly focusing on the content standards. So a lot of this, even though they might look very specific to you, uh, you can make minor uh, modifications, but they are all based on content standards, okay? Posters. One of the thing about posters that I like is not just that it looks pretty. When I think of posters, I think of it as almost as a summary. If you want to think about a movie poster, a movie poster, in fact, is what in the film industry we call a synopsis, right? So uh, I think of movie, I mean, I think of posters as basically teaching the students how do you basically put the most amount of information and be able to edit out what is not important. So a poster becomes basically a place of summary or of synthesis. So that is kind of the, the educational relevance. It's not just a kind of a pretty place, but it's also a place for you to really be able to synthesize and summarize and make visual information and information important. But at the same time, it's also a fun place to celebrate student of the month. So this way, instead of you having to kind of, you know, go into you know, a document that kind of starts you off with a blank, you know, space, you have already something that is there is really very much a time saver. Infographics. What I like about infographics is the logical sequence. So if you have something that requires sequential or logical thinking, right? If you look at what, this is a very good way of organizing the content. So it literally goes from, you know, comparing two types, you know, you, you have a logical sequence to your thinking. So if you're teaching a historical timeline, or if you're talking about the life cycle of a butterfly, all those have a logical sequence. 
So I think of all this template, not in terms of that just looks pretty, but is what is the skill set that we want our students to learn in terms of logical thinking, creative thinking, pattern thinking, or whatever it is. So when you're thinking about infographics, it offers that kind of sequential, logical, sequential thinking that is scaffold. And another thing that is really interesting about this is, is that I use infographics and I share a lot with my other students. I mean, with my other teachers, especially in science and in geography, special and even in math. So if you think about subject matters that requires sequential logical thinking, right? Now, the number one that comes up to me is math. The second one is science. And social studies, if you have a narrative way of teaching social studies that is story-based, there's always a kind of a storyline. So infographic is really, really good to use to kind of display that type of, you know, that type of um, thinking or learning process. This is my, the one you're hearing now is actually water on a tree. <laughs> right? So this is something that I'm really experimenting with now. So one of the thing about videos is, is that it really kind of brings real life into the teaching and learning experience. I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning, but I often at the beginning of my classroom, you know, first day, you know, I tell them I speak Spanish, you know, I speak Chinese, and obviously I'm speaking English to you, but I speak this other language that actually is the language that has stayed with me from birth, from very beginning, because when I had to learn Spanish, you know, I couldn't speak a word of Spanish. I had to learn, you know, como se dice, como se dice, right? And when I came over to the US, I literally, I could not speak one word of English. I had to learn English from the beginning and I was using the Spanish alphabet. So when the teacher asked me how many, you know, letters is in the English alphabet, you know, I actually use the Spanish because of the ñ and a you know, and, and doble u, you know, I was, I was like so confused. But I told my student there's one language that has stayed with me from the very beginning that I actually use to experience, to express, and to communicate. And that language was the visual language. So a lot of the technological advances in educational technology has been teaching towards, has been pushing more towards what we call multimedia, right? And what is multimedia? Multimedia, if you change the word media, you change to modality different ways of accessing information. So if you go from a draw from a cave painting to a paint to a drawing, right? And then to a photograph, what is the next thing, right? Is now videos. And then if you want to go even further, we have virtual reality, which a lot of people are using. So now video is the most kind of seems technologically congruent with what our students are capable of handling in our classroom. And as you know, because of the virtual learning, the basic technology is a Chromebook. So SFUSD has literally distributed, some has distributed thousands and thousands to every single student who needed a Chromebook. So that's the basic foundation. So videos now is actually pushing the boundary of what a Chromebook can do. So video is the next thing. So now this is what I'm experimenting. So in future workshops and seminars, I'm hoping to kind of share some of my experience of how do you incorporate, you know, videos into what we call storytelling or logical sequence? How do you then show the growth of a butterfly using video, right? How do you tell a story of migration or diaspora? How do you organize a story when one person is in charge of one chapter versus another chapter and another chapter? And how do you best show the visual information so that even if a person does not speak the language that is being written, but can still access that information and feel part of the learning? There's nothing worse for a student to be sitting in the classroom and feel completely detached. And if you know about classroom management, about misbehavior in the classroom, 
all the misbehavior in the classroom has to do with a student not being able to engage. So if we have more modalities, more media where we can have the students engage, then there's no classroom management or discipline issues. Okay, so education presentation, I always use this. And the reason why is because each one of the presentation will have multiple pages and you're gonna see how I do that today. Creating and sharing assignment. I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly because we, I want us to be able to have enough time. And, and Jessica, if, if I, you know, I'm a teacher so I can talk forever. So if you feel like, you know, do a little time check on me. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So how to create? So I use Canva. I don't create my lesson using Google anymore. Why? Because Canva is just prettier. It's much more inspirational. It has all these templates that is already there. It, like literally it pushes me above 50% of what I need to do. So I create all my lessons on Canva and then I click a couple of buttons and it ends up in Google. And in Google, there's a Canva link. My students can then go onto Canva. So Canva Classroom has become my classroom. I'm looking forward to the day when I go back in August and incorporating, like, you know, using a projector, projecting this, you know, onto the screen. And then my students be able to kind of see what is in the classroom on the projectors, on the projector screen, but also have the same kind of, you know, workspace on their laptop you know, on their computers. That's going to be very, very powerful. So all the things that we learn in this virtual reality now has a much stronger impact into our students' ability to be connected to the lesson. So create an assignment in Canva. You open up the assignment, okay? And then you basically select assignment and then you give the description, you choose assignment is for, and you publish, it's just that easy. I'm gonna go through this very quickly. How students start their assignments, you know, from the notification email, they click on that, and then the student will get a unique copy of the design that will display on their editors, and you can make the edits to, you know, to their assignments. Usually this type of assignment is individual work. I just want you to know that. There's ways in which you can do it in collaboration, but this particular method is more for if you want your students to work individually. Okay, you can send it to other teachers, as I said before, it's very easy, just add whatever subject matter connection you want to make, and then you save the other teachers and, you know, you can do collaborative teaching, you know. And then you can review students' work. You know, it's kind of, it's not a grading platform, but you can actually review it and give comments. And this is, the next thing is what I use a lot of, we did an Earth Day poster, you know, for April. And you can basically kind of write the, by clicking on the, on the actual artwork, there's a little kind of speaking bubble that comes up and you can write the comments. And you can address it by using the ad and the students will actually get an email. One thing that, I, this is what I really love. Here is the Earth Day poster assignment that I did. And this is for me, something that I always thought I would never see in my 27 years of teaching. If you are a teacher and you teach something, you're giving a lecture, I can almost guarantee you, you have this thought in your mind. You're always wondering, what is going on in my student's mind? What is, what are they doing? <laughs> you just gave this 10, 15 minute presentation. You gave all the steps and all this and like, okay, are there any questions? Okay, students get to work, right? And as a teacher in the classroom, you don't know. You actually don't know until you walk up to that student, you look over their shoulders. You say, oh yeah, they're doing this. Or you look at their computer screen. Let me tell you guys something. Now you get to see their mind at work. Each one of this template is a student at work. Right now, this is not animated. But when you click on the little, little kind of the stack icon here, all of this work. So this is every single one. This is student one, two, three, four, every single one. So now I can see their minds at work. 
you see like they're moving the globe, you know, adding more text, you know, and what I do is I usually have this in my share screen, almost like say if you're in the classroom, you're projecting this onto the, onto the screen. And then I make comments. So everybody now can see what everybody else is working, you know, and this is, there's cross pollination here. They inspire each other, but most importantly, as a teacher, I have a visual animation of my students thinking process. It's like me opening up their minds and seeing that's what you are thinking or what if they're not doing anything, right? If they're stuck, then this is where I come in and I say, yeah, little Johnny, maybe what you can do is, you know, add a few other things where the space is much more incorporated instead of just having images that are in isolation. So ask yourself, sorry, ask yourself, what is the connection between this four images? Sorry, this four images, you know? So I get to then use the student's learning process to further expand and inspire others. Teachers, use this tile. You, get, you will see what your students are doing. You will see how, what they're thinking. So the question is, what is my students thinking? Here's a visual animation of that. 27 years of teaching, I never thought I'd see it. Here it is. <laughs> I hope you're excited about that. <laughs> Can somebody tell me, are you excited about being able to see your students? So uh, are you? Yes or no? I've been talking for a long time now. <laughs> Feel free to type in the chat. Gene D says, yep, absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so next step, creating and teaching in Canva. I'm going to share some of you what I've done with my students. So this is a 12th grade class of so your teaching um, higher grade. Uh, this is in the econ class. Um, I collaborated with the econ teacher. We basically have this, because it's project-based learning, we have this thing called the business plan project. And it lasts for about three months. So this is not something that we do just one off. And, you know, I think that the, the, the idea of teaching something once and then going on to something else is probably very 19th century, right? <laughs> or 20th century, now we're in the 21st. So most of it is based on experience or project. So this is a larger. So what my students did is that they needed to create what we call a digital storefront. And again, you have to understand that when we do this assignment, and we're going to do this assignment together as a class today with you guys, that they kind of went in and really kind of did market research. They kind of, you know, really gauge what their own skill level, what they're capable of doing, their production methods, all those things that you can think of creating a business. My students actually went through that in their econ class. And they made it, so they thought about the concept of that in the econ class but then they came into my class to make it real, to actually make it into a real thing. So it's not just theory, and they put it into practicality. So that's what my job is. So here is the lesson, just to let you guys see it. This is the camera. So this is the actual, this is the actual workspace, okay? So they created this, they added this and made it into basically call to action buttons that link to a Google form and the Google form is linked to a Google spreadsheet so that they have the accounting and they actually use that and they then turn this and it's not here they turned into a full uh, investors presentation to, um, uh, deck so they actually expanded on this website and, and incorporated their Google form and their, especially their Google sheets because they needed to show their income and revenues so that investors then can invest into their business because they needed to have investments. Here, this, are, this is what they describe, say goodbye to crazy high school senior portraits. <laughs> so this is their business, they went through that. Some pictures and have it transformed, decorate, customize. Most importantly, these are my sweet artichokes. I call them artichokes. And, um, just to give you a little story, they all went to, this one went to Berkeley, this one went to, I think, um, SF State, and I think he went to San Jose State. 
high schoolers are so influenced by their peers, both positively and negatively. They work together. And one of the things is that at the end of the high school year, they always, oh, I'm going to miss you so much. I'm going to miss you so much. What are we going to do? This thing is still on. This business is still happening. This is how they're keeping connection with each other. So when we talk about lifelong learners, right, as teachers, like what they learned, how can, how can they expand into beyond the classroom? This business, Snapchat, Snapchats is still in existence. So this is how they're keeping their friendship and their connections. And they started in their high school econ class with me and with Mr. Benedicto. Here's just a little bit about who they are. Here is when you click on this, it takes you to the forms. Here's their contacts. And this is just to show you guys a little bit. Um, this is just a little video of that 40 second video just to give you the slides. And again, they can use this. So this is a very good presentation method. Our students use this, um, this way of presenting. So they're talking so that they don't have to clip. And it becomes, I mean, I can share this video to their, to their investors. You know, so it's a very creative way of taking something that they learn in econ that has to do with economic systems and really making it into a real thing. Okay, and they can share this if they wanted to. That one assignment. So the next, so we're gonna work on this assignment together, okay, teachers. So the next assignment is digital storytelling. How do you use templates for digital storytelling? Now, if you look at these three images here, each one of these images was not created by one single person. This image was created by up to 30 students at the same time. How do you do that? And then remember, I think that, you know, I think most of the world's conflict, I'm being a little bit of a kind of a soapbox person, Mike. Most of, the, most of the conflicts that we experience in this world has to do with not understanding the other person's story. And if you're able to create a story together, I think we're gonna be in a much better place in this world. And I think we as teachers, we all strive for that, right? is how do we create, is create stories together so that we can see each other's common humanity? How do we create a learning space where students, and by the way, each one of this is a student, they created their own characters from very distinct background as I described to you. How do they come together and create a story together? that shows their own, that shares their own common humanity. And Canva presentation template presented that. So I'm gonna click on this and show it to you guys what it looks like in my class. So second period, I was teaching them how to basically do, SAA stands for setting, actors, and action. If you think about every single picture, you always start with a setting, then you introduce the characters and then you have the movements. And the movement doesn't have to be physical movement, it can also be verbal, okay? So here is act one, act two, and it's just briefly gone over. So the theme of the story, this thing came at the very last day of this lesson. This was left blank until the very last day. And it took about maybe three, I think it took about two and a half weeks to do that. Here is, so we, the idea was, I, I did not give them any prompt about what story they wanted to do. It was a blank piece, like it was blank. And you will see what it looks like when we do this assignment too in our second assignment. One person threw in a hut. That was the first thing that went in. It was a hut. And the next person threw in an island. The next person threw in coconut. Then the next person threw in rainbow. Next one threw in ocean. That's how they started. Each one 
added to what was already there. There is a fun um, acting improvisational game that in the US called Yes And. Mm -hmm. Basically you listen to what the person previously said and you add to that story. So this is basically the same idea. Now, so here when this is at notes, oh no, here actually notes, here let me click on this. In the copy version, it doesn't have that, but I'll show you that when, when there is one. So you use this template as a place to incorporate both the written text and the visual text. And remember, I have students that do not speak English, but they're able to go to elements and type in house, and they're now able to add to the story. Nobody's left behind. Nobody is left behind. Everybody can be part of the story. I love when they put the BMW in there. <laughs> Melvin did that. And everybody, after Melvin put the PNW in there, every single person started writing, can I get a ride? I couldn't believe it. It was, I mean, the conversation though. So I mean, they created this thing and they just keep on adding things and they started having side conversations. You know, I mean, so anyway, so I was just showing you this. I want to have enough time for us to have as much fun as my students did, but let me just go to one slide here. I mean, they they go through, they do the writing. Each each one is one student, so they add. So instead of just visually adding, they're now using kind of like a Google Doc format, right? I'm giving I'm spending a little time here because I'm giving you basically the direction to our common activity, right? So I'm gonna go to one that is already. So here's, we created our own characters. So this is called a character gathering room. So they created a character and they measure up. So I asked, I asked Dahlia, how tall are you? She said she's 5'2". So I said, well, don't make it too big. Bring it over to the six feet tall measuring and then make it so that it at least addresses, you know. So here, so this is a live one. It glitched a little bit. Oh, by the way, the limit on camera, we almost crashed it, is 300 images. So just to know that, and video is 50 videos. So we push the boundaries of this technology. So when you look at this here, right, you can move this, you see, you can move this. So what they did is they cop, and I'm giving the direction. You go to this thing, you copy and paste your character, and then bring it down here, and then you paste it. And then we, ours is not gonna glitch as much because we're like, this is, so it kind of pops up. And another thing about this is like here, let it come over. So you see this, you can move the guitars and stuff, you know, like all this is, so this is, and what I did is I took a screenshot because it was glitching. So now it minimizes the images. So here is, here, let me click on this. You can see the notes. This is see they now write the scene description. So if you know what a screenplay has screen, you know it has scene description. It describes the scene. So incorporating that, this is INT interior gift shop warning. So this is basically a screenplay, but it's a visual screenplay. I'm gonna go to the very last page because it was so sweet. I, I you know how do you end the story? You know how do you and this is let it come over. How do you end the story? The story never ends, but how they ended the story was, they said, we're gonna end it up in front of our school. This is the front of my school. This is Balboa High School. And what they said was, we wanted to have a picture day. And this is the return, it's the first day of return after being in isolation. So they created a story where it took them to a fantasy world, Hawaii, but ultimately where they want to always be is actually at school. And because I call them my artichokes, <laughs> they created this for me. I didn't create this. They collaborated with Col that created Mr. Lee in Black Turtleneck. And here is the notes. Right here, I'm smiling on my media arts class. They wrote this for me. <laughs> 
Is that sweet? Again, each one of them was part of creating this collective story and which you are going to have experiencing today. Okay. So activities, business plan website, we're gonna spend a little bit less time here because it's pretty fast because it's just changing. And then we have the visual screenplay. So here's a, so we need about three people, you know? So if you want to, I think that Jess is going to want to, we can have more people if you want to, but just know that when we have too many people on this particular template, it's going to be a little bit chaotic. But, you know, for this particular, we want about three, maybe five people if you want. So if you are here, um, Jess, did you put the, the link on the in the chat yet? Yeah, what I'll do is if you would like to collaborate online live in this activity, then could you please um, make a comment in the Q&A panel saying link, please? And I'll choose three people from the Q&A panel because then I can send you the link. Um, just do it in the Q&A panel because then I can send the link directly to you. Um, otherwise, I can't do it in the chat because not everyone's name is coming up there. So, Jean, fantastic, sending you the one now. Um, so I'm going to choose three people, but uh, we've got another activity after this where we'll need a few more people. So you can have a lot more people. That one would go a little while. Yeah. Okay. okay, cool. But this one, let me just give you a little bit more context here. So remember what I told you is, is that you have to now imagine and we can work on this. You can change the font. You can change the name of this business plan. But just to give you guys a little context here, when I did this, right, I just type in, you know, like websites. And you can go type websites, and it will give you all these things. So my students basically, and that's the nice thing if you're teaching older students, because in the US, one of the very big thing is called, you know, college to career. So it really gives them a real good view about what really is happening, right? What really is happening in the real world. So they use a professional website and made it into their own professional website. So welcome. So I have one student, one person here. I think who is that, guys? I think that's, is it Jason or? So once you are in here, you're welcome to really just kind of experiment, choose one page, right? And you can make comments. What I usually like my students to do is to, when they make something happen, thank you. When you make something happen, to use the add comments, right? And write in what you have done. So what you have done. We can have five people here, Jess, you know, we can have five people. You know, sure. I'll, I'll choose a couple more. Yeah, just choose a few more so that when you are working, so you're welcome now to basically hop on. Like I said, I, I see Wendy on page one. You know, so maybe what you can do is change the name of this company. So instead of if you have your own photograph and your desktop, you know, if you already have your, you're welcome to change this. You can, you know, say goodbye to Nicole, you know, and change and change this. And if you want to have, so, you know, maybe we can think about a modification to what a, like, see what they do, you know, you can change some of the buttons, the color of the buttons, you can change the, so it's very self-explanatory in what you can make the modifications. So I want, I welcome you to kind of go in there and basically, you know, kind of write in, you know, a little bit, you know, like change the photographs and be part of the team. If you want to, you know, you can copy and then you can paste, you know. So now we can make this. And as a teacher, I will make this a little bit smaller. Okay. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to move this to here so we can have more students. You know, make this a little bit smaller. So you're welcome to kind of, you know, add to this. And when I'm teaching, right? When I'm oh, when I'm teaching, I'm doing similar things. And you know, a lot of the times, 
like one thing is all these images are not grouped together. So what I want to do right now is look, I can do this and then I can say group, right? And now when I do a copy and I do a paste, you remember how you see how the name was all like I had to redo the names. You see how I just did that? So now the grouping function is actually a really useful function when your image becomes very, very complex, right? So like this one here, I can, and then I can paste this, I'll bring this to here, and like make it a little bit smaller. So I'm adjusting the template in which my students are actually working on, right? You can make it a different way. <laughs> Hi, Jean. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so here is, I'm going to make one more. Why don't we have one, two, three, four, five? Why don't we have six people if you want, Jess? Yeah, I think we've got about six people now, actually. Oh, you have six people? Okay, yeah. great. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it. So this here, you know, you can kind of arrange this and you can move this while the students is working. So here I was, I was talking about how important it is here look when i click on this i get to see what you guys are doing right i get to see the movements like you know somebody created a new page and change that i can literally see this happening another thing that I, another thing that i encourage people to do is to you know kind of go to different slides and make comments about what other people are doing. So what I encourage you to do now is you get to see D. So what I would do is I would add a comment. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so you can see the comments much easier. So I can then say, okay, add in teaching D, right? Like, very nice photo, right? And then exclamation mark. And now I can add something that's like, I like the background, right? Of your photo. And then I can make a comment. There you go. So I encourage you to, you know, we need professional, absolutely. So more photographs, you know. So if you want to type in, like use elements, you know, you can type in, you know, I don't know, men, and then you can do photos. <laughs> I don't know who this person is. Let me see if I can find somebody who, you know, you can add to, you know, <laughs> here. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Anyway, so you can make different changes. So that's one way of doing. It. But I do encourage you to kind of, you know, really work on using the chat. So if I go to this one, maybe, you know, you can kind of change this to a different language. Like say, what about if you speak a different language? I have this one page. I can duplicate the page. Now is sobre nosotros. You know, so if you want to make this in Spanish, you can do that. You can change the text, right? If you want to add one more function, maybe you can add a button that says, you know, yearbook, you know, somebody, and then we have a yearbook, you know, function. You know, contact us, you can change the background of the image, you know. I'll let you guys work a little bit. So I like this image here of the hand kind of connecting. So what I would write is, you know, who did, I don't know. If you add something, use the uh, comment buttons or you can use the notes button if you want to. You can just say, I add it and then write your name on there. That would really kind of allow us to see basically how this process is being you know how this process that was my I want to get rid of that okay make sure that you change your names 
Thank you. Very hi, Sonia. Sonia, where are you teaching from? If you want to unmute yourself, please unmute yourself. Let's have a little conversation. People who are working on this, I would like to hear some voices. Hello. Yes, I'm from North Carolina. Hi, North Carolina. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> How's the teaching going there? Going over there in North Carolina? Well, we are in early school, so we're. This is our last week. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Are you guys going to have a real graduation or a virtual graduation? We're having a real graduation. That's wonderful. So, so, oh yeah, there you go. So you just added, that's great. That looks beautiful. So you guys are now, this is a new team here. That's wonderful. Hi, Wendy. Let me see what other people are doing here. If you want to kind of change this a little bit, you know, if you want to just don't worry, my, my students know that their, their project is being, this is not the one, so you guys can go, you know, as creative, as inventive, as explorational, as, you know, as you want. So in nosotros, thank you so much, Alejandra, for doing that in Spanish. Sam Shaz is una pequeña compañía que, fac que facilita la toma de secciones de fotografía. Thank you so much for doing that. So now we have a different language. How much more time do we have? We still have 24 minutes, right? Yep. Okay. I think we're gonna give this about a couple more minutes so that we can go on to the next one. What do you think, Jess? Does that sound like? Yeah, I think that's perfect. It gives us a good 20 yeah, minutes. So that will give us a little bit more time. So again, this is, I mean, to summarize this assignment, you know, like this is an econ assignment. We just use a template for website and the students were able to really be able to incorporate their ability to basically make something conceptual, you know, from their business into something that is a digital storefront. You know, so this is a very straightforward, it's in a very kind of almost a traditional way in which most teachers would use a Canva template for their teaching and learning, right? For our, for our students. The next one, and sometimes I do this and, you know, I say website presentation. I like the, I, I usually like the standards. So sometimes we like, we can open up the website, we can see it. Here's the website, you know, can go to services, you know, can send pictures. We have more, you can add to it. We have our, <laughs> right, about and about, right? So right now about is in is in English. So I'm going to get out of this. But this is what you're working on. So I'm going to go to this one. And instead of saying about, I'm going to then change this to sobre. Okay. So you guys are welcome to stay here if you want to and continue to work on this and maybe we can come back to it towards the end just to see what are some of the changes. But I'm gonna go back to the presentation for our next assignment. So our next assignment, oh, before we do that, if you want to write some questions and answers, I mean, comments about the business activity, can you please write it in the chat? And then I'm gonna go on to the next page. I'm gonna go and take you guys into this amazing world of creating a story together. So here's the lesson. So you guys have access to this particular lesson that you can make modifications. So what I did is it's just a very simple template. I mean, you guys saw the original template, but this is just kind of a much more streamlined uh, template. So the questions that we're gonna basically ask ourselves is where do stories come from? And these are guiding questions. I mean, you know, I mean, stories can come from anywhere, you know, but it's a, so again, this is what we call experiential, right? So the lesson here is it doesn't have a end point. It's us providing the students an experience so that they can then accumulate their knowledge based on that experience. This lesson can last a whole year. You can do, set the, you can do this at the beginning of the school year and then in the middle and then towards the end. You know, this never has to end. So again, we're always going to this guiding questions of, 
And you, every time you go back to this lesson, we always ask the students, have your concept or your understanding of where the stories come from, has have it changed, has it added something, has, has it grown, all right? How does a story develop and how do you create a story with different people? So these are guiding questions and you can always come back to those questions. Now, when you start a story, this is my direction, start with the setting. And I'm gonna give you guys a direction and then you add the actors and then you add the, oops, then you add the actions, okay? So in movie making, we usually have this thing called act one, act two, and act three. This is just beginning, middle, and end, okay? You have the exposition, you have something happening, and how does it get resolved? But in movie, it's a little bit more specific. I'm not gonna go into that because I'm not teaching you how to make a movie at this moment. And here we have the direction, and you have access to these people, so you can kind of have a deeper dive on your own, you know, in your own time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a character. We're gonna create a very, very simple character. We're not gonna do the kind of character that we did in my class because it will start glitching and we know we don't have that time in the 20 minutes that we have so far, okay? So what we're gonna do, the first thing we're gonna do is if you have the link already, so Jess, can you have a few people come to this? Yeah, sure, so just pop your request in the Q&A panel again, not in the chat panel, but in the Q&A, just say link, please. And how many people for this activity, George? Did we say five? Have, let's have 10. Let's 10, have 10. 10 people, cool, okay. So yeah, just put your request in the Q&A panel, link, please. So we're gonna access our inner child now. So we're gonna pretend that we're kids or, or our students. <laughs> but this way, the reason why um, the comment is the reason why I chose this is because it allows much more greater uh, flexibility to it's basically like like a blind page and I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the how I kind of did this template so welcome so what I want every single one of you to do now is to come to page four which is what we call the character developing room so once you're here I should be able to see you so hi Angelique Right, I see you here. And I want you to do one thing. I want you to click on here and I want you to click on add comments. And I want you to say, hi, I am George Lee. Sorry, my typing here. Just introduce yourselves, please, using the chat. Once you get to the character developing room, hi, age, Angie, is it Angie, Angie Lee? Yeah, hi. Wendy, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, Jean. Everybody just kind of introduce yourselves a little bit. Usually I like 50% when I'm doing this because it's just enough size so we can still see all of this. I'll make this a little bit bigger, depending on your screen size. So the first thing I want you to do, we're going to quickly create a character. So either, you know, as, as you know, however you identify yourselves, you know, you can type in girl, right? And then you type in. Now, instead of using a photograph, what I want you to really do is I only want you to use graphics. So only use graphics. And this has to do with just basically the style in which we are using. So I kind of created a little something here already from before. So like say, if you want to use this, you can click on here and here's the character, right? I want you to do that. So create, I won't be able to identify you by name, but create one character See if you can have one, if you can have a full body. If you only want to be a character of just a floating head, you're more than welcome to do that. But that's your character. But because the reason what I want you to do is I want you to kind of like say here, you create this character, here's this character. The next thing I want you to do is actually to type in face because I want you to kind of have one other element. So I want you to create a character that is not just something that Canva created for you. 
but that is a character that has some unique personality to who you are. You see how I just did that? <laughs> so create that character on this character page, drag the, and again, we're only using graphics. So and if you like that head very much, then you can type in body and maybe you can have a tiny bit of a body. So after you create the character, if you want to save time and you don't want to personalize it, that's fine too. You can just write, you know, boy, oh, sorry. And then click on graphics. And then if you find a character that kind of identifies with who you are, maybe I'll use this one. Make your, make your graphics, okay? Now, I think I'm going to bypass the dialogue originally. If you want to do this really quickly, all you gotta do, all you gotta do here is, I want you to copy, like go to this little thing here, copy, and then paste it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do this for you, it's just so that it becomes a little bit easier. So I'm going to put a little bubble next to you so you can introduce yourself kind of like what you did before. You know, kind of just introduce yourself. I'm gonna get rid of this one because this one, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm just gonna be the teacher now. I'm gonna drag this and give this to you. I'm gonna move you here. Give it to you. So just write your name here. Before you write it, just um, this, my birth, I will be celebrating my birthday soon. Can you give me your name please so we can identify who you are? So whoever is having the birthday, Add, add it. Yeah. Okay, no. Angelique, can you please also write hi? You know, write your name here. So it's almost like in a, you're in a cat, you know, cat in the room, and then you just say your name. You can click on here, just and then type in whatever your name is. I'm gonna give you guys about another minute or so. And then I'm gonna teach you a little skill set so that we can actually start creating the actual space. So you guys are basically using this developing room now as a gathering room. So once you have this ready, if you can move this character, hi Jean, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to move that character down to the gathering room. See if you can do that. You have to copy and paste the, your image. Before you do that, make sure that you group it, kind of like what I showed you before, and then go group. And then you can copy and bring your character to the gathering room. So one way of doing that is say if I'm here, I have the little boy. What you want to do is you want to have the little boy. So you're going to go here, you're going to control copy, and then you're going to come to this room. And then you're going to paste it. And once you paste it, bring your character. I'm six feet tall. So I'm going to bring this because this has to do with size and proportion. I'm going to bring it up to six. That's roughly how tall I am in real life. And I'm going to leave it here. If you brought your dialogue over, that's fine. You guys are having so much fun creating your character. We're not gonna have any time to create the real world, yes? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few questions about um, how we actually created this collaborative document. Could you just go um, and show everyone the share menu, just literally how we created the link, the, the link that you- Yeah, would, I'll show student. you this. This is very simple. I'm gonna show you this. So this is the entire deck. Basically what I did was I went to templates. I just, you know, just, you can go to even go to home. Right. 
you can go to a home, you go to presentation, and then here is the here's the blank one. I just keep on adding and adding and adding and adding. That's how I get it. So it's from a blank document. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and then just the um, showing how we get the link to, that you would actually send to your students. So from oh, the okay, absolutely. Yeah. Hold on. Let me go back to that presentation. I can send you the link if you want it. Quickly. No, no, I got it. Okay. So what all you do is once you have this template all constructed, all you gotta do is go to share and you can copy the link. And then I copy the link, I copy the link, right? And then I go here. This is not a, um, this is my Canon account. So if it was an educational account, there would be a Google Classroom. And then you just click on that and it takes you to Google Classroom. That's how simple it is. Also, when you share this, you know, when you when you share this, you can basically drag your entire your email list from your students and you just drop it and it will go boom, 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 boom. It will just come up. And then you just and then they will and then make sure that when you do when you share this, that you see you can edit because when you you can watch, you can edit, right? So make sure that you click on you can edit. Fantastic. We've got another question from Maureen saying, is there a way to record the page or the template as the students make the story? I think it would be nice to watch how the students create the story. So if you wanted to record it. Yeah, I think the only way that I thought of right now, and thank you, is it more? Maureen. Maureen does it? Yeah, that is an amazing because what happens is it's like, see if I click on this, like you saw the students working. You know, like you see how, the, you know, you can, I don't know if you can see, when you have more people, you can see them more clearly. So you see that thing is moving, right? So if you click on this, you can actually see them moving around. Hold on. You can actually see them moving around. One way of doing this, because we use Zoom, I was thinking about basically recording the, my share screen. And then you can see the animation of their, of their thinking process. I hope that answered your question. Okay, great. So we have enough. Wonderful. Now, leave your character there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to basically start creating our first scene. Now, if you see the background here, the reason why I chose this particular background is because this background has a faint horizon line. It's a suggestive horizon line. And this suggestive horizon line wants you to start with the setting. So if you think about setting, what is in the place? Don't think about your character yet. I don't want you to think about your characters. And I don't even want you to think about, you know, I don't want you to even think about what you're going to do. The first thing you think about, if you think about a play, you need to have a stage. We need to create a place together. So what I want you guys to do now is to type in using the elements, using the elements, think about some element that would be part of a place. And we're only working on this first template here. We're working on scene one. So everybody come to scene one. Wendy, thank you for being here. There we go. We have a living room, right? Now, in this living room, there's already a lot of different things. There's a, there's a sofa, there's cushions, there's a table. Can you deconstruct this even more? Think about sofa. Why don't you type in just the word sofa? So we want to have as many different things because this room is already created. So choose a sofa and bring it to, see if you can actually create this room, which is already finished, right? Already finished, there you go. So I'm going to delete this page and we're gonna basically create just a room. So we have two sofas here. Now, when you see a sofa, you see a plant. This is where this idea of yes and comes in. You see sofa, now we're gonna add a table. Yes and, yes and, we're now gonna have a, we're gonna have a bookshelf, right? What well, other things can go? And when you're looking at this thing, look at the size and proportion of things. Maybe you can make the sofa, if it's further away, a little bit smaller, right? 
And then if you have a sofa that is a little bit closer, look at what other people are doing so that when you are adding your story, when you are adding your story, your image, it corresponds to what other people have done so that you match. So you're always asking yourself, it's not just end, 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 end. Please make sure that you have a yes. Look at what other people have done and add to what is already here. I'm gonna let you guys create that. Wendy, can we hold off on the characters still? If you have a, if you wanna have a pet, then we can have a pet, but let's not, let's, we can have a cat there, but let's just think about things that goes in a place, things that once you, is in, is like, it's not moving. So if you have a cat, we can add the cat a little bit later. Just like think about things that stays unless the cat comes over and knocks it over, right? So maybe now we're going to spend a little bit more time. There's a fireplace. I'm going to let you guys work. Remember, you are working together on this. So when you are adding something, see what is already existing. So now that you have this space, right? I want you to bring your character, go all the way up. You know how you put it into the, into the gathering room? That same skill set, bring it all the way, copy it, and then bring it to scene one. So if you want to add the cat now, you can add the cat. And remember, we're only using graphics. So I'm going to add this cat. Remember, make sure that the size, this cat is huge. So make sure that the size and proportion matches. So now you are standing behind the couch, very good solution, right? This fireplace, is this fireplace in the place where it matches the other one? So if you added this fireplace, see how you can incorporate it into this overall scene. And if you see here, there's a huge wall space here with a light. And you can do, one of the things that you can do is you can sim something behind. So if you want, like say this, this table, right? So if I want the cat to be here, what if the cat is actually hiding? So I can click on the, I can do position, I can sim to the back. Now this cat is hiding behind the bookshelf. Is it? is a shy cat. Wow, time went by pretty quickly. It sure did. I can't believe it's just, it's just I mean, I, I want to work on this thing. Like if you were in my class, I mean, I want this to go on for another hour, you know? <laughs> but here, I mean, we're, we're at 629. So I hope you guys got an idea. I mean, as you develop more and more of this, you know, the story then goes on. You. So the other thing is now that we have this living room, what is the next, what's the next thing that can happen? So then the story continues and continues and continues. So I hope that I give you guys kind of an idea about how to do collaborative digital telling. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we had, a, we had a lot of questions. Lots of people are very excited about the um, collaboration potential um, and ability of Canva for their students. It's a game changer, some people were saying. So thank you so much, George, for sharing welcome. those ideas with us today. Guys, explore the Canva website. There's a lot of videos that can help you with things. You know, this is my friend Nick. He's really, really good at explaining. And then if you want to teach your students how to do graphic design, there's embedded lessons that you can do. It's self-guided. Now, Thank you very much. I think I'm done talking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Lots of thanks coming through in the chat. I hope you can see that, George. If you've got your chat panel I open. Am. Thank so you. inspiring. Thank you so much. So yeah, we're hoping to do another deep dive webinar with George in the not too distant future. So and, um, yeah, and also, you know, the uh, Facebook community group, I do a webinar every Friday. So you can sign up to the Facebook group, you know, see, see there again. Yeah, absolutely. I'll put that that link in the chat as well. 
Um, for those of you that might just want to click straight on that, there is the Facebook group, facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Canva Teachers Community. Lots of teacher goodness on that site as well. <laughs> and for some of you teachers who are staying late, go to bed. <laughs> go to sleep. You worked so hard already. Your students know that you love them. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, George. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.